morning, everyone. Chris McKendry and Bob Stevens with you until college hoops. DNT Coming basketball up analyst Charles Barkley joins us from Mia, Las did you ever think in your country? No way. You know, I just remember from a little kid always thinking, like, somebody has to be different. And I knew I was, I was different from the way I competed to the way I wanted to succeed to the way I drove myself academically. I wanted to change something. I just always felt like somebody has to do it, and I think it's going to be me. I just wanted the best education available to me, and being a tennis player and getting the opportunity to go to a private school like Drexel, that was it. Um, and I knew I would figure out what I was going to do when I was there. But I did always love sports, and I realized I just had a knack for understanding statistics and remembering players and players' names because I just loved it. People want real life experience, and Drexel was light years ahead of its time in knowing what the co op would do, knowing how it would get people a foot in the door. No one batted an eye that I would just leave campus and, and go to a TV station and come back for a class later. Hextel still says the bottom line is the difference of opinion in money. In Voorhees, I'm Chris McKendry. I think once you let the student into the workforce, the genie's out of the bottle in a great way because then your education becomes the classroom and the real world. And that's how it has to be in order to succeed now. And when I decided I wanted to do on air work, I thought I need to learn how to have a big presence and have a strong voice. So I took broadcast speech lessons when I was producing in Washington and it was that voice coach who called me and said, Chris, I hear the ABC station here in Washington, he's looking for a woman sports anchor. It hasn't been done yet in the city where that is your job. You're not substituting, you're not the reporter filling in, you're a weekend anchor. Chris McKendry has a story. Then the world did change and people were looking for women to talk sports. So ESPN called and I was advised, you go. <laughs> I was asked to come up to Bristol in that July of 1996 for a week just to get a better understanding of how they put together sports centers. It was meeting some really big personalities. You know, that was quite the golden era of ESPN. So we got towards the end of the week. Kenny Maine was supposed to anchor a weekend show and had an emergency. So they asked me if I wanted to do the show, and that was late July of 96. I said, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll do the show. And that night, the Atlanta Olympic Park bombing went off. Oh my God! What the hell was that? It became a news story. It wasn't a sports story. I was out there, you know, anchoring a major breaking news story, making sure I didn't do anything that would journalistically put ESPN in trouble. You know, the audience decides very quickly if they're going to like you or not. And that was my one big shot. So I, I just sat down and just started anchoring and just, you know, really had the feeling of, you know, I do belong here now. Afterwards, when the lights came on, they told me, you're an anchor. You're a sports center anchor as of now. And it's something I learned playing sports growing up. I learned at Drexel trying to juggle work, co op, uh, TV station, sport, school. Is I really believe I can outwork anybody. And I'm not afraid to outwork anybody. And it's the only thing you can control at the end of the day. Students who go to Drexel are going with the intention of. When I come out, I am going to be skilled and I'm getting a job. Who knows how the world's going to unfold? That happened for me. You know, suddenly I had a passion, I worked hard, I looked for little openings here and there, just little cracks. And the next thing you know, huge doors have opened now and women were wanted all over sports. And the world fell in line with me. And wherever your ambition lies, like, follow it, you know, follow it and let the world catch up.